Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God acknowledged them. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert, and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come up to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Exodus chapter 3. The story of Moses is a big story. He wrote five books, Genesis dealing with events before his time, Exodus telling of how they were delivered from Egypt to enter into a new relationship with God, which is described in detail in Leviticus. And then we have details of their journeying in the book of Numbers and in Deuteronomy, the spelling out of how they were to live as they moved into the land, their future if they obeyed and if they disobeyed. And so Moses is one of the very famous names from the Bible because of all that he did. And in our reading today, we see his call by God. And what motivated God to call Moses? First of all, note, Moses did not choose to be a deliverer of the children of Israel. He had at last found a place where he was happy. And for 40 years, he'd been content to look after the sheep of his father-in-law in in the wilderness. He was not a man of great ambition. Having been brought up in the palace and seeing all the strife that occurred there and the pressure of being a prince and yet despised because he was a Hebrew, having been rejected by his own people when he attempted to do something for them, now for 40 years he'd had a fulfilling life as a shepherd. No doubt there were the little issues of life that he had to face as a shepherd, but there was not the emotional stress and strain that came from his previous life. And so he did not appoint himself to be a deliverer of the children of Israel. But God called him. In fact, God had spent 80 years preparing Moses for this task. But the motivation is that the children of Israel groaned because of their bondage. 
And they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of the bondage. Unfortunately, when we cry to God, we kind of want him to do some instant magic trick. And God is not about doing instant magic tricks. The deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt would be a process which required their obedience and faith. And our deliverance from any situation that we are in. Yes, we cry out to the Lord, but our deliverance will be a process which requires obedience and faith on our part. But God sees our situation and God hears our cry. And it's also stated that God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob. He had promised them that they would be a great nation. He had promised them that they would be given the land of Canaan after 400 years. So we're told God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. These are my people. These are the ones that are covered by the covenant I made with Abraham, and therefore I will hear their call. And that is why God hears the call of the believer. When we call upon the Lord in our distress, in the circumstances of our life, if we have a relationship with God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, then He hears our call and he acknowledges that we are his children. But don't think that he will instantaneously relieve the issue. He will work through the circumstances and raise up the appropriate people to deliver, to bring deliverance. And so the first step was that one day Moses was out in the wilderness. And a characteristic of the wilderness is that there are wildfires. They flash up and burn for a while and disappear. But this day, Moses saw a fire that lasted. It kept burning, for it was the angel of the Lord appearing to him in a flame of fire. Fire speaks of judgment, and the bush was burning and yet not burning. It was withstanding the judgment. And so he came to have a look at this bush that was on fire but was not burning up. If you watched a a dry bush burning, it blazes up quickly and dies down quickly. But this bush continued to burn. And as he drew near, he heard a voice, Moses, Moses. And he responded, here I am. He had heard about God. He knew about God. But here God is calling his attention. And so As he drew near, he was told, Take your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. This was in fact on the mountain that he would come back to with the children of Israel, and there they all would meet God, and then the whole mountain would be on fire. And our reading ended with the sign, This shall be the sign I have certainly sent you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. So Moses took off his shoes. He didn't lift up his eyes to look at God. He was afraid to look at the face of God. Later he would ask to see the Lord's face and the Lord would say, no, nobody can see me but live. But now he is fearful of God. His relationship with God would develop over the years and over the experiences that they would have. And the Lord tells him, I have seen what the Egyptians are doing. I've seen their taskmasters, I know all their sorrows, and I've come to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them to the land of Canaan. Well, that part's fine. Good God, I'm glad you're doing that, says Moses. And the Lord repeats, I've heard their cry. I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. But then comes the crunch. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God now says, Moses, I want you to partner with me. I want you to be my spokesman. And Moses says, who am I? Who am I that I should go and speak to Pharaoh? The implication of the Lord's answer is, indeed you are nothing, but I will be with you. I will certainly be with you. And you shall serve God on this mountain.